What's up, wrestling fans? Welcome to another Hot Tags edition of the Smart Out Moment Smack Talk podcast. I'm your host, as always, Tony Mango, and this is the breakdown of the current events, the rumors, the news, the gossip, and everything else that went down in the world of professional wrestling over the past few days, kind of, because there's really nothing to talk about. Uh, this is technically episode number 363, although technically, and this is something that we've been talking about, it's not technically 363, we've done far more of those. I don't want to dive down the same thing all over again, but basically, if you have not been uh, following along, I'm really getting annoyed at the whole idea that this is, you know, technically week number 375 or something along those lines, and it's really just kind of uh, a little bit unorganized, and my OCD is kind of uh, getting, I shouldn't say OCD because I'm not like clinically OCD or something like that, but my OCD-ish tendencies are getting the best of me, and it's kind of uh, fighting a two-way battle. It's Part of me says, hey, you've been doing it this long this way, and you might as well just keep the formula. Another part of me is saying, it never made any sense to begin with, so why are you doing that? Why don't you just abandon it? Another part of me says, this is a YouTube channel, so it doesn't matter that there's not a week-by-week-by-week by week by week episode number kind of a thing, and that this could just be... Hey, the hot tags pop up when the hot tags need to pop up, and the uh, other kind of stuff pops up when it needs to pop up, and so on and so forth. I don't really know. Uh, so since I still haven't figured it out yet, I figured, you know what, even if I don't have that much to talk about for the hot tags, because we just went through an edition of the hot tags on Saturday, why not just go ahead and do another one anyway? Uh, there are a couple topics that I can run down. Uh We'll see how much I can get out of it, and then I'm sure, of course, throughout the week we're going to get some other stories, but since we've got many, many podcasts coming up, that's where you'll find out some more of that information. So, of course, reminder, we've got the whole setup with uh, NXT TakeOver War Games and with Survivor Series, so we've got predictions for both of those, and then the post-show for both of those coming up, and then, of course, after that, if I feel like doing the hot tags, we'll get another one next week and that kind of thing, too, but... Uh, I'll break down a little bit more of some of the future things at the end of this. Uh, let's just run through the hot tags. The first thing that I have that I want to just talk about is on the, uh, on the creepy, what the hell type of side of what hot tags can be. Uh, this is an eBay listing that has gone around for a couple of different sites and I wouldn't have been aware of it unless a couple of sites had reported on it on a slow news day. And, uh, this is what it essentially boils down to. Somebody on eBay is claiming that they bought a Connor's Cure t-shirt that had two strands of Sasha Banks' hair on it. Uh, they are, <laughs> this is ridiculous. They are saying they're 100% legitimate, uh, that they, the pieces of the hair were, well, I, you know, let me just read the whole description for this. This auction is for the Sasha Banks two hair strands only, does not include signed t-shirt, which already is fucking ridiculous. These hair pieces were found embedded in. This auction includes two strands of purple hair from WWE superstar Sha Sasha Banks. I found these strands weaved into the Connors Cure t-shirt I purchased on WWE auction. I pulled them out and placed them in a bag. These are from the 9-18-2017 Raw episode where Sasha comes out to block Alexa Bliss from leaving the match against Nia Jax. He spells... I'm assuming he spells Jax, J-A-C-K-S. This auction is for the hair strands only, not the signed worn t-shirt. I promise all pieces were pulled from a shirt after inspection upon opening. I assure the strands belong to Sasha Banks on Raw 918 when she wore this shirt, which can be proven by watching or viewing the authenticity of the ring shirt worn by WWE. Uh, <laughs> this is, this is one of those things that, um, I find horribly pathetic on multiple levels. If you're the type of person who would want to buy strands of hair from a celebrity, you've got problems. If you're the type of person that goes through their effort to do this kind of a thing, hey, you know what? If it works, I can't really fault you too much for taking advantage of some of the other people that are out there in the world. Uh, but it's still very, very creepy. If you buy into this when it's just two strands of purple fake hair and this person could legitimately just take like i don't know like a, a wig and throw that in there 
then I, I don't know what to tell you. But even more so, if you buy this at the price that it's listed, which according to this, I, I don't know if this is right or not, because it's like some kind of Russian thing or something like that. It seems like the price is $39,000. That is insane. You should not pay five bucks for somebody else's strands of hair. You should not pay a dollar for somebody else's strands of hair. You should not want to collect somebody else's strands of hair. And on top of that, if you are spending $39,000, so that which is like a down payment of a house, or it's a brand new car, you are certifiable. And <laughs> I do think that this is hilarious because it is so damn creepy. Uh, yeah. So that's the weird, weird story for me to talk about this week. So let's talk about some injuries. Uh, we have that like, Cody Rhodes is injured. He is going to be taking time off after he apparently ran into a situation where he was teasing, throwing his T-shirt, and that's what injured him. I don't really follow Cody Rhodes too much on the indie scene because I don't really follow the indie scene all that much, but still, bad thing. Thumbs down. Boo. Luke Harper is apparently also injured. He was wearing a cast at something the other day I, I forget exactly what it was some kind of a convention or something like that so that is one of the other reasons why we haven't been seeing the bludgeon brothers back although eric rowan has been injured for a long time now and i don't remember exactly for sure when the timetable was for his return but if i remember correctly it wasn't until at least after wrestlemania so there were some Rumors that they were going to bring Bray Wyatt into uh, SmackDown and that he would team up with Luke Harper and that they'd kind of reform the Wyatt family a little bit. Uh, they can't really do that if Luke Harper is injured. So I guess for now, the best thing for Harper is to just kind of sit back and relax and heal up a little bit and that, you know, they shouldn't push him too far when he is able to actually come back. Uh, whether he comes back with... Eric Rowan or on his own or with Bray Wyatt Harper I think has more to offer than what he's been giving a chance to do and I kind of just don't have a whole lot of faith in the world that they're going to give him that chance but you know what uh right now is not the best time to be on the roster anyway so if he was going to have to go out now is a good time because they are in a complete mess of uh just the writers are in shambles and everything like that so they wouldn't have been able to do anything with Harper to begin with. And if he takes his time off and stuff, maybe when they start to get a better feel of what they want to do in the future, maybe when he's able to return then, that he'll actually get something decent out of it. Maybe they'll go over to Monday Night Raw after Super, uh, what was it? Superstar Shake Up. Uh, I don't know why I blanked on that right then. That's weird. Uh, that's another thing. But you know what? A positive thing is that there's a little bit more news that Jason Jordan might be coming back. And he didn't specifically say that, but he did say that he was going on to do, you know, the necessary steps of getting back and that the next thing for him is kind of starting up already and all that. He was backstage for Monday Night Raw. So that's another good sign. Kurt Angle tweeted out something saying that it's good to see him back and that he will make a comeback and different things like that. So, you know what? Maybe Jason Jordan's been going through the rehab and maybe it's working out a little bit better now. And maybe there's actually a chance that he can return. I hope to see him back because he has a lot more talent than what he was actually able to show off. And even though he's not the type of guy that was the most over person on the roster, I think that he's somebody who could still show, uh, not show, he could still put on a great performance and do a lot more in WWE. Uh, plus, it's just a matter of, you know, he clearly wants to do this. So why would I not want to see him uh, be able to come back from injury, you know? Uh, let's see what else I have. WWE Ride Along, the EST Expressway was this final episode. The Riot Squad was on there. They were kind of just whatever. Uh, Sarah Logan farts a couple times. She keeps up the stereotypes about a lot of different things, just talking about good old country stuff. Liv Morgan is apparently an idiot when it comes to driving. Ruby Riot's kind of like the mom. Eh, Whatever. Edge and Christian should have been the most entertaining part of this, but they really basically talked about how they had nothing to talk about. So this was a skip. Don't watch it. It's a waste of your time. Uh, for the season finale, it really underwhelms. The final thing for me to talk about for hot tag wise, other than a little 
uh, heads up as far as WWE Chronicle is going to be airing after TakeOver and WWE 365 is going to be airing after Survivor Series. So, you know, I'll talk about those probably on the hot tags next week. But the final thing outside of that is to talk about the Mixed Match Challenge. They finally have given this season stakes. Now, the first time around is for charity, which was a little bit weird because they scripted this. So, you know, they pretty much cut the check for the charity to begin with. Uh, but this time around, they have clarified that the winners of season two are going to get an all expenses paid vacation to anywhere in the world. I really kind of don't understand that one. And the number 30 spots in the Royal Rumble. That's because, you know, you got a man and a woman. So men's Royal Rumble, women's Royal Rumble, and that kind of a thing. We know that basically the way that this tournament has been working out, it can only be three different teams on either side. Uh, we've got Carmella and R-Truth and Rusev and Lana on SmackDown are 0-3. They pretty much can't get any enough wins to be able to be the number one team. And the same thing for uh, Mahalisha and Team Paws. Uh, they announced that there's going to be some kind of a playoffs thing and Balor and Bailey B and B are in the playoffs. So by that rationality, day one glow is also in the playoffs. So that means that phenomenal flair and day one glow and Miz and Oscar are going to be the three that are in the playoffs for SmackDown and the three in the playoffs for Monday night raw are monster eclipse B and B and country dominance. Now, Country Dominance and Monster Eclipse are the same kind of situation as Phenomenal Flair and Team Asuka because those are 3-0. and The other two, uh, Day One Glow and b and B, I'm talking a lot of numbers here, sorry, are 2-2. Two and two. I don't know exactly how they're planning on doing this whole playoffs thing, but this is what is confusing to me. They haven't done the last place teams against each other yet. And if they do that next week, there's only three more weeks to follow. With those three weeks, you would assume that they would have to do the three remaining teams up against each other. So, for instance, Country Dominance versus uh, B&B. Country Dominance versus Monster Eclipse. Again, that's happening this week. And then Monster Eclipse versus B&B. In that scenario, though, based off of my math, and maybe my math is wrong, there's still no way for B&B and, of course, Day One Glow on the opposite side of things for them to come out with the winning average. Because if they get two wins, you know, they beat both of those teams, they end up with four and two. However, by just the sheer math of things, say you've got Country Dominance and you've got Monster Eclipse. If Monster Eclipse wins... They are four and one, and oh, if they lose the next one, they're four and one. Already, that means that they have a better record than B and B with four and two because they have one less loss. So how does this work? Well, it seems to me like it's a guarantee that either Country Dominance or the uh, Monster Eclipse team have to be in the finals for Monday Night Raw, and if that's the case. It seems to rule out the idea of Braun Strowman and Ember Moon with Monster Eclipse because Braun Strowman wants to have this match against Baron Corbin at TLC. That's, according to uh, all the different people out there, that is what the game plan is. The same thing goes for SmackDown. If Phenomenal Flair has AJ Styles on that team and Charlotte Flair, it wouldn't make a whole lot of sense for him to be the number 30 entry for the Royal Rumble, would it? Nor would it be for Charlotte Flair because if she wins, and by all accounts she's going to win the Royal Rumble and she's going to challenge Ronda Rousey, then winning from the number 30 spot isn't exactly all that great and, you know, shows her as being this, like, great warrior type. But AJ Styles is holding the WWE Championship. He can't go into the Royal Rumble as the WWE Champion. It just doesn't make any sense. So he would have to lose, which would mean by default, Miz and Asuka have to win on that side. Just the math again. They would be, end up being four and one, or they would be three and two, or they would be five and zero. Oh. That's just how it works. Those are the only three ways that that happens, unless they add an extra match. And if they add an extra match, just to give B and B 
and day one glow, the chance to go into the future like that, then, you know, that's what we're looking at. So I highly doubt that this is going to end with Jimmy Uso being the number 30 entry in the Royal Rumble. Naomi as a number 30, that's a little bit more believable. Actually, that's a lot more believable, but I still don't think that that's going to be the case. So I'm assuming here what we're going to get. I have no idea what's happening with this all expenses paid vacation. That just seems like complete and utter nonsense. But if the number 30 spots are in the Royal Rumble, it seems to me country dominance is going to win this. They are going to leave this with the number 30 spot. We're going to see Mickey James be number 30 and we're going to see Bobby Lashley be number 30 and they will beat BMB with a four to one versus a four to two score. But maybe Finn Balor ends up getting the win out of that with Bailey and that they end up doing that. If the Miz and Asuka win, which they very well could too, then the Miz and Asuka are the number 30 spots. And that really paints Asuka in a really bad light because, you know, she's going in as the winner last year and the number 30 and then a loser. So we're looking at Mickey James or Asuka being number 30 and we're looking at the Miz or Finn Balor. Uh, I'm not the Miz or Finn Balor, the Miz or Bobby Lashley being number 30 for the men. That's basically how I see this working out. Last thing for me to talk about on just a general sense here is to just uh, remind you guys of a couple other things going on. Plug wise, same as always, head up to Patreon if you want to show your support for a smart cap moment and you have a little bit of spare change. That's the best way to do that. You could also buy merchandise over at Tee Public and Redbubble. Uh, we. Typically, of course, want to give you a little bit of a sneak peek of what's happening next week at the end of the week kind of a thing. But I'll just mention it here. Mailbag is coming up next week. So start sending in those mailbag questions uh, pretty much as soon as you can. I've got a couple backlogged, if I can remember correctly, mostly from Howard. But uh, the sooner you send them in, the better. I don't know when we're going to be recording that. I think it's probably going to be the day before Thanksgiving, that Wednesday. So send them in. And I'm going to post a reminder of that on the Mega Maniacs, just in case people are not listening to this necessarily. Also, stay tuned for the next round of the Champs Giving Tournament. I'm going to be posting that in the morning. Right now, I'm recording this at like 1230, uh, you know, a little bit past midnight. So this will take a little bit of while for me to edit and then post. But then Champs Giving round five, the semifinals will be posted. So that's going to see The Undertaker against Stone Cold Steve Austin. And Edge against CM Punk. Uh, that, that's who you picked. Not who I picked, but <laughs> that's who you guys picked. So we're getting towards the end here of determining who the best world champion in WWE is, according to you. And uh, yeah, I think that that's it. So hit that like button, subscribe on the YouTube channel, and ring the bell for notifications to be aware of when the uh, NXT TakeOver War Games 2018 and Survivor Series 2018 predictions posts go up here. And then, of course, the post shows after the live coverage on SmartCapMoment.com. These will be posted then on Saturday and Sunday night. Then the mailbag next week after that. Uh, that's about it. All right. So follow me on Facebook and Twitter at SmartCapMoment and at Tony Mango and A Mango Tree and all the other kind of things like that. Stay tuned to FanboysAnonymous.com for anything on the geek culture spectrum there. I might be watching... Uh, Fantastic Beasts, I might be watching Robin Hood, I might be watching Wreck-It Ralph, I might be watching Creed 2. I mean, at some point I'm going to see these movies, but I'm not sure if I'm going to be doing review points or if I'm just going to post things on the website. I actually watched Bohemian Rhapsody recently, so check out The Weekend Geek to find out my thoughts on that. And I'll just see you when I see you, everybody. Thanks for listening, thanks for all the support. I will see you next time. This has been another Smart Cap Moment, and I'm being counted out. 